All right, let's talk about the solution to the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom. We won't go into detail about how this solution was obtained. Perhaps that will be a topic for another online video lecture. As we indicated when we were setting up the Schrodinger equation, put it in spherical coordinates in anticipation of being able to separate variables. So uh, for spherical coordinates, we have three variables, r, theta, and phi and the wave function, the total wave function, is a function of those. But since we set up our system in spherical coordinates and it's a central force problem, we can separate out the variables. Let's separate them this way. This is a variable that depends only, or this is a function that depends only on the variable r. That's the radial distance the electron is away from the proton, which we have set at the center at the origin. And then uh, these will be the uh, this will be the function that depends upon theta and phi, the angular dependence here. So you have a radial dependence and an angular dependence. It turns out that these, this angular dependence is the spherical harmonics, the exact same functions we got when we considered the quantum mechanics of a 3D rigid rotator. So that means we already know about these solutions. Let's sort of refresh our memory about those. Here they are. All right, so for this, well, we have these rows are characterized by different values of L, and the columns are characterized by different values of M sub L. So L equals zero, you can only have one value of M sub L, and this is what the shape of that looks like. Now when I say shape, uh, what do we actually mean by that? Well, let's actually be more specific about what we're talking about. Uh, what we have is these spherical harmonics were a function of these two angles which will essentially give you the latitude and longitude on the surface of a sphere. Uh, what you actually plot is um, the distance from the origin of your coordinate system. So here's your coordinate system and we have three uh, two angles theta and phi and depending on what theta and phi is we will plot the value of the function as a distance away from the origin at that particular theta and phi so as you move this uh, vector around in space but as you move it around in space the length of the vector will increase or decrease depending upon what the value is of the wave function of the spherical harmonic so that's what we're actually plotting in the um, in these pictures here. They take the origin, go right out. The length of that vector will be uh, is actually the value of that wave function. All right. So there it is for l equal zero. For l equal one, we have two or three values of m sub l. M sub l equal minus one, zero, and plus one. Here's l equal uh, two. We have five values of m sub l. We have m sub l equal minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. So we already know about the solution, the angular dependence uh, solution of the Schrodinger equation. It's just the spherical harmonics that we talked about, 3D rigid rotator. So let's now uh, focus on the radial part here. This is what's new in the hydrogen atom. All right, the radial part can be written as e to the minus r over n a where n is this quantum number which we'll talk about in just a minute times this function f of r now remember when we talked about the solution to the uh, spherical harmonics we talked about um, a associated Legendre polynomial well here we have associated Laguerre polynomial very similar uh, in uh, in terms of what we did for spherical harmonics. Let's go to the Wikipedia article on Laguerre polynomials. All right, Laguerre polynomials arise as solutions to this particular differential equation here. Actually they're called associated Laguerre polynomials. That's what we're going to use. So when we separated variables and uh, put the separated wave function into the Schrodinger equation, what you end up with is a differential equation like this where this double prime means second derivative with respect to x, single prime means single derivative with respect to x. All right, so whoever was solving the Schrodinger equation first for the hydrogen atom recognized, oh my goodness, 
this has uh, been around for a while. Uh, like the Laguerre lived here. I don't know when he actually developed these polynomials, but anyway, there it is. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just look up and see if anybody's done it before. And yes, indeed. So let's take a look at um, what uh, uh, the Laguerre polynomials really look like. I think I passed it here. Oh yes, here we go. Explicit examples and properties. All right, so as we suggested, we have uh, this value of n, which is, we're going to say, a quantum number. Uh, the Laguerre, associated Laguerre polynomial for n equal 0 is oh, just a constant 1. For n equal 1, this is it, minus x plus alpha plus 1. That alpha comes from the terms you have in the separation of variable Schrodinger equation. L equal 2, second order polynomial. L equal 3, third order polynomial. And just sort of to jump the gun, you find that this n equal 0 uh, Laguerre polynomial doesn't work for the, or the electron and the hydrogen atom. So in fact, you start your um, Laguerre polynomials with L or n, sorry, n equal 1. But there they are. So nothing mysterious about those. They're just polynomials. Okay, and then you multiply that polynomial by e to the minus r over n a. So that's um, pretty much it. We skipped over a lot of the detail, but in basic outline, that's what the solution to the Schrodinger equation is in terms of wave function. Then you put the wave function back in the Schrodinger equation, and you get these eigenvalues, these energies, and here it is. These are a bunch of constants, but note this minus sign here, and also note it depends only on n squared, or only on the quantum number n. So in general, the wave function is a function of n, l, and m sub l, but the energy depends only on n. It depends only on the radial distance uh, the, um, the electron is away from the central proton. Once you set that radial distance, then the uh, energy does not depend upon these two or these two coordinates, these two spherical angular coordinates, depends only on n. This collection of constants here is sometimes given the symbol R sub h. You may recognize that from introductory chemistry. That's called the Rydberg uh, constant. And the Rydberg constant has the distinction of being the most precisely measured physical constant that uh, scientists have measured so far. It's known uh, to uh, probably 12 decimal places, one part in 10 to the 12th. Okay, so uh, as we said, we have uh, three quantum numbers here. And let's see what the restrictions are that come from the Schrodinger equation. Here they are. N, as we said, there has to start at 1. And this is called the principal quantum number n starts at 1, goes up all the way up to infinity. So n can be any integer starting at 1 and going up. Once you specify a value of n, then there are some restrictions on the value of l. l can only go to a maximum value of n minus 1. So for example, n equal 1, that means that l can only be 0. If n equal 2, then l could be 0 or 2 minus 1 is 1, 0 or 1. And then given that value of L, there are some restrictions on values of M sub L. M sub L can go from 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. So this is similar to the, or actually exactly identical, to the restriction on M sub L for a particle on a sphere. But now L for a particle on a sphere, L could go to infinity. Now in a hydrogen atom, L can only go to a maximum of N minus 1. Okay, and here's the energy again, and here is the uh, Rydberg, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think there are maybe a few other significant figures I've missed here. Okay, so that's the solution to the hydrogen atom in terms of wave functions and energies. We'll consider those solutions uh, in a little more detail in the next few video lectures.